Hey, what is going on, guys? Boy, Trent is back in a video, and Ole Miss fans, we got two games left this year. This Saturday, last home game of the season, we got losing to Monroe coming to town. And then, of course, the last game of the season, you got your in state rivals in Starkville this year for the Ed Bowl Trophy on Thanksgiving night. So, in this video, we're going to take a closer look at Louisiana Monroe, uh, talk about their best players, uh, things to watch out for, all the good information and other stuff in today's video. So, the game uh, this Saturday, pretty early kickoff, uh, 11 o'clock Central Time kickoff, 12 Eastern Time on the SEC Network, uh, up and under 62 and a half points, and then Ole Miss is favored by 37 points in this matchup. Now, taking a closer look at Louisiana, you know, Louisiana Monroe's schedule, the, the opponents they play this year, the scores, that kind of stuff. This is a team. They started 2-0 this year, and then after that, it's, it's been pretty bad. Uh, they started 2-0, and then eight straight losses. First game of the season, they beat Army 17-13. Game number two, they beat Lamar. 24 to 14. And then here we go. Here's all the losses. Eight straight losses. Texas AM beat them 47 to 3. Appalachian State. That was a one-point game. Appalachian State got the win. 41 to 40. South Alabama. They killed them. 55 to 7. Texas State. Another one-point game. But Texas State got the win. 21 to 20. Georgia Southern beat them by 10. 38-28. Arkansas State beat them by 10. 34-24. They played Southern Miss a couple weeks ago. Southern Miss got the win, 24-7. And then this past weekend, uh, they played Troy. And Troy got the win, 45-14. Uh, so, yeah, this is a team. They started 2-0. and And now they're on an eight-game losing streak. And then after this Saturday, it's about to be a nine-game losing streak for them. So, uh, this is a team, but I'm just going to be honest with you. Now, they, they've had a couple injuries this year, a couple, you know, close games they could have won. This team could have a better record in 2-8. and eight. They This year, they, they just have bad luck with injuries, close games, uh, just, just that, you know, just that kind of stuff right there. But I will say this team, they're uh, – okay you know decent team when they play teams in the Sun Belt but of course when they play a team like Ole Miss or play a you know top 25 team then they're on they're on struggle let's just be real let's just be honest now uh, their their defense is kind of a okay decent defense during the Sun Belt but once again when you play teams in the SEC when you play a top 15 team like Ole Miss you're not going to look too good, but I will say some of the best players this year on defense, uh, Michael Bodden. Now, this guy leads a team in tackles, uh, 70 tackles, does have a half a sack this year as well, too. Um, and Bodden's kind of a big, kind of muscle guy, kind of fast, too. Definitely their best uh, player on defense overall. Uh, they have a couple pretty good defensive linemen, actually. Um, Aiden Huntington, uh, 52 tackles. The guy leads the team in tackles, uh, five and a half sats. I know they got on the defensive line, uh, Kennard Snyder, uh, 52 tackles, four and a half sats. Um, their, their secondary overall, it's kind of pretty bad. Uh, they do have a couple of pretty good linebackers. They have two good defensive linemen. So they do have a couple guys on defense, you know, kind of okay, decent players. Now, some of these guys are good enough. Uh, if they want to transfer in the offseason, they can definitely play somewhere a little better if they want to. Uh, but, but they do have a couple okay players on defense. But look, th this is Ole Miss. Ole Miss is still on put up 50 or 60, you know, 60 points this weekend, maybe more than 60. You, you, you just never know. Uh, but they have a couple guys on defense. You still got to watch out for. Sure, to be careful with a little bit. Um, their offense, I will say this. Now, they do have, well, in my opinion, they do have one of the better, uh, well, this receiver in particular. Uh, he is one of the better receivers uh, there in the Sun Belt. We'll talk about him here in a minute. 
have a couple kind of okay, decent running backs, and actually one of these running backs used to be at Ole Miss. We'll talk about him. We'll talk about him in a minute. Their quarterback this year, they've used two quarterbacks kind of pretty often this year, and they've both been struggling, um, running, passing. Uh, they're all just their offense overall is it's bad. I'm, I'm just gonna keep it real. Now, if I'm taking a guess, who's gonna be the starting quarterback this weekend? I mean, you will see both guys play this weekend. Uh, you could see maybe some of them play both series uh, together. You may see one just play the first half, another one play the second half. I'm not really too sure what their game plan is as of right now. But I'm going to say there's a pretty good chance you'll see both of these QBs this weekend. But they're both, they've both been struggling passing the ball big time. Now, uh, Jayla, Jayla Wright, this is one of their quarterbacks, uh, has thrown for 1,124 uh, passing yards this year. But both quarterbacks have a completion percentage just over 53%. These guys, look, I'm, I'm just going to be real. Just be honest. They have been struggling this year, down the field passing, um, even the short game as well, too. They have had problems all year connecting passes to their receivers. And, you know, this this weekend, when you got a, you know, when you're playing against the Ole Miss defense, this is probably the best, you know, this well, this is the best offense they have faced this year. They don't. They don't struggle passing the ball. They don't struggle running the ball this weekend too. But Jay Wright, this guy, you know, this this I will say this guy has a lot of bad decision making. Um, just, just sometimes he just I, I'm so beat real. Sometimes he just don't think and just just throws the ball and sometimes don't even notice a defensive player there in coverage or don't realize a receiver was double teamed sometimes. Uh, but this guy does have 10 uh, passing touchdowns, six interceptions, so that's not the best ratio you want to have. Uh, 10 touchdowns, six interceptions. I will say Wright, kind of a okay runner. There will be a couple plays this weekend. He's on game, four and five yards of run, if not more, some plays. Uh, he may get he may get lucky a couple times, but but yeah, Jay Wright, uh, 81 rushes, 229 rushing yards, one rushing touchdown. Uh, the other quarterback, which I'm sure we will see this weekend too, is uh, Blake Murphy. Now this guy has 701 passing yards. This guy, 53.2 completion percentage. Wright was 53.7. Murphy is 53.2. That is 0.5 of a difference. And what Murphy has, has a bad ratio. Uh, three passing touchdowns, four interceptions. Murphy's one of these guys that's kind of pretty young, still kind of running a bunch of stuff. And for him, just like just like Wright, both guys struggling passing the ball down the field, short coverage, they're they're struggling. Decision making for both of them have been pretty bad all year. Look, in this game, I, I expect the Ole Miss defense to dominate. Uh, I, you know, I think there's a good chance you could see a couple interceptions this weekend. You may see some fumbles. That's been another problem for them, too, is protecting the ball. They've had a bunch of fumbles this year. Uh, their offensive line's been struggling this year. Um, just, just the whole entire team overall, it's been struggling. I'm just going to keep it real. Uh, their whole entire offense has been struggling. The defense for them has had a bunch of struggles throughout the year as well, too. Uh, but that is information about their uh, quarterbacks. But also, you know, Ole Miss has a pretty good defensive line. Uh, we're one of the best in the country for getting sacks and tackling for loss. This weekend, I think our defensive line could also dominate, too. I'm expecting a couple sacks, a couple tackles for loss. Um, some of our defensive linemen may strip the ball loose, may get a fumble recovery from some of those guys this weekend. Uh, moving on to the running backs, uh, Hunter Smith is one of the running backs. Uh, 73 carries, 423 rushing yards, um, three rushing touchdowns. He's averaging, I think that's right around four or five yards a carry. Um, and then the other running back, we kind of mentioned earlier, this other running back, 
used to be at Ole Miss. Isaiah Woodward. And to be honest with you, I kind of forgot about him. Uh, I knew he transferred. I just didn't know where he transferred to. But long story short, the former Ole Miss running back is now at Louisiana Monroe, Isaiah Woodward. Now, this guy, Woodward, um, does have more carries than Smith, uh, 90 carries. They're only five yards of a difference apart. Um, I mean, Smith had 423 rushing yards. Woodward has 418. Uh, Woodward also has one rushing touchdown as well, too. Um, and they're both kind of okay, decent running backs, but I, th I think both of them this weekend can have a chance, maybe like 50 rushing yards each against this Ole Miss defense. They'll go get, you know, they're, they're going to get lucky a couple times. They're going to get some, you know, four and five yards here. They're going to pick up a couple of first downs in this game. Uh, but I think they, they both have a chance of anywhere from 30 to 50 rushing yards each in this matchup. Um, moving on to the receivers, I will say now their best receiver, in my opinion, one of the better receivers there in the Sun Belt. Uh, now this guy, I mean, this, this guy, uh, I think he's, I think he's a junior. I'm not too sure. I mean, if, if he is a junior, uh, this guy has the opportunity to definitely play somewhere better next year. Uh, don't know what he's, I don't know if he's thinking about transferring or not, but I'm just saying if this guy wants to move up and play for a better team, better conference, this guy could definitely do it. And that is uh, Tyrone Howell. Now, this guy has 44 catches, 516 receiving yards, uh, seven touchdowns. This guy, kind of a tall, athletic kid, uh, especially used a lot of times in open field, a lot, used a lot of times uh, in the red zone, too. This is definitely one of their red zone targets. He does win a bunch of those 50 50 battles as well, too. Uh, Ole Miss has got to be a little careful with him this weekend. Uh, I could definitely see this guy getting some tackles. I mean, you can get him tackles. Getting some catches. Probably going to break a couple tackles here and there. And uh, this guy may just get a touchdown this weekend. I would not be surprised if he gets one. The other guy, kind of an okay, decent receiver, that's uh, Darian Wiley. Uh, 23 catches, 397 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, but that's just kind of a closer look there at Louisiana Monroe. I mean, once again, this team overall, they've been struggling both sides of the ball. They have a couple okay players, but just overall. Ole Miss, you know, it's kind of obvious. Ole Miss is just a better team, more athletic, faster, stronger. Just pretty much everything all over the field. Ole Miss, the better offense. Ole Miss, the better defense. Just all sides of the ball. Ole Miss is better overall. I mean, you know, Ole Miss fans, we're expecting to blow out this weekend. I think Ole Miss has a pretty good shot, winning by more than 37 for sure. This game, look, it's going to be like Mercer. You know, this is going to be a blowout. You know, you know, Wisconsin Monroe, they may get seven. They may get 10. I don't see them getting past 13 points. I mean, I, I would not be surprised if they did if they do score, you know, a couple times, maybe get a touchdown or maybe get a field goal in this matchup. I would not be surprised if they do. But you know, we're Ole Miss fans, we're expecting to boil out this weekend. I don't expect this to be close at all. Ole Miss, you know, should dominate halftime. Ole Miss probably gonna be up by three or four touchdowns, if not more. Second half. Probably going to be mostly backups, to be honest with you. Um, but I'm, I'm expecting blowout. This game should be like Mercer and Ole, Ole Miss should kill Louisiana Monroe um, this weekend. Uh, I do want to mention this right quick as well, too, before we, end the, before we end the video. Now, of course, Ole Miss fans know uh, last weekend, Dart, you know, he got hit pretty hard, you know, a little bruised up. Uh, you know, Kiff announced like he's good to go, uh, ready to play. I mean, I would not be surprised. Well, this is just my opinion. I would not be surprised if you don't see too much of Dart this weekend, just for, you know, safety reasons. You know, he may play just a couple series, and then we met what we may let just, uh, you know, Spencer, you know, play most of the game. Walker Howard probably will get some playing time toward the end. Um, 
So you may you may not see too much of Dart this weekend. I don't really know if you don't play too much. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Kiffin's just kind of resting him this weekend, suit him for the Ed Bowl. But that's just kind of I guess my thoughts, my opinions on the Ed Bowl. I'm not the Ed Bowl. The uh, the matchup this weekend with uh, Louisiana Monroe. Uh, whether he all thoughts and feedback, opinions will too. But that is pretty much all I got for the video. So hey, if you can please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Would be very appreciated. See you guys this video. Have a good one. Alrighty, tidy.